In the first few months of Copilot for Microsoft 365 being generally available, lots of businesses have started to adopt these tools and lots of users are seeing benefit from them. But there are repeating questions I hear and errors I see through different deployment processes that are impacting businesses' willingness to commit to these tools or for users to gain the full benefit from them. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the top three mistakes or misunderstandings I'm seeing from those who are planning for or have started the adoption of Copilot for Microsoft 365 and how I'm helping businesses mitigate those mistakes by understanding Copilot better. Before we dig in further, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized businesses on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. Some of the biggest confusion points around Copilot come down to how it works with your data. Foundationally, the most significant value differentiator for Copilot for Microsoft 365 versus a competitor product like ChatGPT is that Copilot has the inbuilt capability to work with the data you already have in Microsoft 365, including your documents, your meeting transcripts, your chats, and your emails. But while this is generally well understood, the specific detail of what Copilot might look at to generate a response isn't. And this can lead to security concerns, mistrust, or overplaced reliance in what it tells you. The most important thing to understand is that Copilot operates entirely in the security context of the user making the request. Copilot can never provide content to a user that they wouldn't otherwise have access to, and Copilot does not have any special ability to cheat permissions or other security you have around your content. However, the reality is the more complex and data-filled your Microsoft 365 environment gets, the more likely it is that any single user has access to things they maybe shouldn't. Someone may have inadvertently added confidential information to a SharePoint site they didn't know was shared with everyone, or perhaps someone shared a document with a link that gives everyone access instead of specific people. These are really easy mistakes to make, and under most normal usage, they wouldn't cause any day-to-day -day problems. Although it is important to realize that such errors as this can cause problems if users start to seek out data beyond what they should have access to. Copilot is kind of like an inquisitive child. It doesn't stay in its normal lane as most users probably do. It goes seeking out the best content to meet your request. And if you ask Copilot perhaps to summarize the salaries in your department, it might assume because you have inadvertently got access to your boss's salary through some oversharing that she's in your department too, and it should give you that information. You always had access to that information, you just didn't seek it out in the way Copilot might. But also consider another related issue that doesn't get talked about quite so much as an example. Perhaps you've been in your role for 10 years and you've been writing documents summarizing such salary information over that time. You might have data about 40 or 50 people who no longer work with you. When you ask Copilot for that summary, it doesn't know the data related to all those people who have long left their roles is redundant and gives you a result that just isn't relevant or current. The issue of having access to data you shouldn't is as much as, if not more of an issue, when it comes to out-of-date, duplicated or redundant data, as it is in relation to confidential information you shouldn't see. So, what do we do about this? Well, the objective for all organisations should be to achieve just enough access, where each user has access to the data they need to do their job, no more and no less. How you get there will vary for different organisations, but must be a combination of reviewing access, setting retention policies, and promoting good document lifecycle practices. In terms of technology, Microsoft has a bunch of options that can help. You can exclude SharePoint sites from Copilot's index, or use restricted SharePoint search to start with an allow list of up to 100 sites. You could use access reviews to encourage data owners to take more responsibility for who has access to their content. You could establish sensitivity labeling to apply an added layer of protection beyond item by item permissions. You could turn on retention policies to ensure that data at the end of its useful life leaves your environment and isn't hoarded. 
It's important to note though that implementing many of the tools available to help with this currently requires specific Microsoft 365 licenses or add-ons that may cost you more. Copilot has highlighted data management issues for many organizations, but it's important to recognize that it hasn't caused them. And even if you haven't implemented Copilot yet, getting these issues resolved is good practice as oversharing and data hoarding both create potential vulnerabilities that could be exploited by bad actors in the future. What has been your experience of preparing your data for Copilot? Let me know your tips, tricks, or the problems you've run into down in the comments. If you're finding learning more about how to make your Copilot for Microsoft 365 experience a positive one useful, it would be great if you'd give this video a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please subscribe to the channel. In talking about Copilot's access to data, we considered the knowledge that it brings to answering your requests. But it's also important to understand that knowledge is just one part of the puzzle. The skills that Copilot for Microsoft 365 has is also an important part of what sets it apart from other similar solutions. When we think of skills, you can look to capabilities like creating a PowerPoint slide deck, drafting a document, organizing a whiteboard, creating a new email, anything where Copilot needs a specific ability to interact with Microsoft 365 or a related data source. However, whereas Copilot for Microsoft 365 is talked about as if it's one experience, it's really a whole bunch of different experiences that are entirely dependent on where you're interacting with Copilot. And this isn't necessarily something that's hugely obvious to new users. Say you want to generate some content referencing different files. You might generally start work in OneNote, but using Copilot, the capability to generate text with reference to a file only currently appears in Word. But then you go to Word and you reference your file, and you realize the second reference you've got is an email. Can Word handle that? No. So now it's time to think about Copilot with Graph Grounded Chat at the Copilot website or in Teams. This can at first seem confusing, but the reality is that everyone who's familiar with Microsoft 365 has to realize that the different apps have different capabilities, and the Copilot capabilities in each app are just a reflection of what that app is designed for, rather than just tacking on exactly the same Copilot to each app. This may mean that in some ways you have to alter your workflow to get the best from having access to Copilot. For example, I do most of my content drafting in OneNote, but I now find myself using Word more often when I want to reference existing documents because Copilot really makes me more productive in that task. Would I love to be able to just do this in OneNote? Yes, and I hope that feature is coming. But for right now at least, if you were to get the best from Copilot, your preferences in terms of which app to use for a particular task may need to be a little malleable. Getting the best from Microsoft 365 or from AI tools like Copilot for Microsoft 365 requires gaining new knowledge, getting good advice, and having the right plan. With my company, Bright Ideas Agency, I offer a whole set of options to help you, focused on achieving more with technology. Right now, you can sign up for my brand new live training, Get to Know Copilot for Microsoft 365 Extensibility, being run in June and July, but I also have options for one-on-one -on -one coaching, group training and workshop facilitation, and strategic planning and implementation consulting services. I work with companies around the world who are interested in supercharging the benefits they get from their Microsoft investments. If you're interested in learning more, there are links below for these services, or reach out for a chat about your specific requirements. Last, let's talk about an error that doesn't come down so much to understanding Copilot's technology as it does to understanding how to integrate AI into your workflows in a responsible way. Despite Copilot for Microsoft 365 fairly conspicuously warning people about blindly trusting its outputs, that doesn't stop people blindly trusting its outputs. And this creates a risk for you as a user and for the business you're working for. The fact is that when you dig into the detail of how Copilot responds to your request, it is quite often wrong. Not so wrong that it's entirely off base. We can think of this as being usefully wrong, but wrong enough that you should be routinely reviewing and editing its outputs before sharing them with anyone. Just the other day, I received an email from someone I was doing business with where they had copied and pasted a response from Copilot to answer a question 
and the answer started by telling me that Copilot couldn't find an answer in the document. This did no harm other than wasting a little time, but was probably at least mildly embarrassing for the person who sent me the email. If we think back to the early days of the internet, there was a period of time where accidentally sending the wrong email to customers or sharing the wrong file was nothing more than a silly inconvenience. We were all learning the technology together. But today, those simple mistakes are no longer seen as so acceptable. And if you inadvertently share the file that's meant for one customer with another, depending on what that file contains, you might be running into some trouble and liability. It's likely that the journey of accepting AI mistakes as mild inconvenience rather than a major issue will be a rather shorter one due to our much better understanding of how to integrate new technologies into our lives and businesses. So you definitely want to invest the time now in ensuring your team members get into the habit of safe AI practices that protect their reputations and that of your business. One of the questions that comes up on this topic is how can you know if Copilot is wrong? And I think the best way to think of it is to imagine you've had an intern do a project for you and you have that work in front of you, but maybe the intern is currently out of contact. How would you know the quality of the work? Well, some things you probably do know. How often is it that you start work on something you know absolutely nothing about? Are there any red flags in the response? data points or metrics that don't appear to line up with common sense? If there's a topic involved that you know little about, do you have a colleague that can offer advice? Or does the content even align with the things you can see if you do a simple Google search? In the same way we don't get this 100% right 100% of the time with the work humans do, we won't get it right all the time with the work AI does. But there are simple due diligence steps we must be taking along the way to ensure what we produce is as accurate as possible. If you want to dig further into the specifics of why a tool like Copilot gets things wrong, I recently published a video focusing in on this topic. I'll put a link to that down below. Remember that a tool like Copilot is designed to eliminate or simplify certain types of tasks that AI may generally be better at than a human. This helps us to be more efficient, more productive, and to save time. However, the promise of this product is not to eliminate the need for human work end to end. So if you're looking for effort elimination rather than effort reduction on those busy work kind of tasks, you may be misunderstanding what's being offered here. So there you have it, the top three issues raised or mistakes made when first deploying Copilot. Do these align with your experience? Do you have others that you think are important to talk about? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.